Okay, so really what we want to be able to do is to understand what's happening with light when it interacts with a feature. Okay, is it reflecting, absorbing or being transmitted through? And what are the reasons for that? And what wavelengths are affected? Okay, because all features reflect, absorb and transmit light of different wavelengths in different ways. And that allows us not only to identify different features on the ground, but to start to measure quantitative variables, okay, based on their biophysical parameters. Okay, so we'll look at a number of different scales. So if we're thinking about vegetation, for example, we can start to look at individual pigments like chlorophyll. Then we can look at the leaf scale, or then build that up to canopies and even forest levels. Okay, so all these different levels and scales actually affect the way light is reflected and absorbed. Okay, so on the right hand side we've got a spectral signature graph. Okay, so from your pre-class materials, you should know that on the bottom or the x-axis we used our wavelength. Okay, and in this example it's, it's in micrometers but it might also be in nanometers. And the, on the y-axis is, is our reflectance level. Okay. So if you look at that particular graph, I've got the difference between a theoretical healthy piece of vegetation and one which is a bit drier. Okay, so what are the main differences that you see in terms of those, those two lines on the graph? Okay, so more near infrared by the green vegetation. Yep, anyone want to tell me why? Okay, the intercellular structure. Okay, so when you've got a nice healthy leaf, the cells within that leaf are nice and pumped up, if you like. Okay, so it's like a, it's like a jumping castle. All right, so you can bounce quite well on a jumping castle that's been pumped up, but if that jumping castle deflates, you can't bounce on it. Yeah. All right, so it's kind of the same sort of thing with a leaf. If the leaf is healthy, all the cells have water in them, and so the cells are nice and juicy. So as light comes in, it can bounce off all the different cells before it then reflects back to the sensor. Okay, as that leaf starts to die or droop, those cells start to collapse. And then as light comes in, it can't have quite as many interactions. Okay, so the upshot of that is healthy vegetation reflects strongly in the near infrared region. Okay, because of internal cellular structure or biomass. Okay, so what else do we see in that graph? Yep, okay, so let's talk about these bits here. So the green vegetation drops a lot more in that region. So can someone tell me what this region's called here? Yeah, the sphere, as it says, yeah. Short wave, short wave infrared or mid infrared. Yeah? Okay. So why does the green drop down here? Water. Water absorption. Yep. Okay. So the more water there is in a leaf, the more it absorbs here and here. Okay, so if I want to measure how much water is in a leaf, I simply measure how much light is absorbed in those two areas. Yeah? In this area? Yeah. Does someone want to answer why it goes back up in that area? It's a different frequency of absorption. Sorry? It's a different frequency. Yeah, it's a different wavelength. Yeah. It's that particular set of wavelengths is not so sensitive to water absorption. What about this area here? What's this telling me? Yeah, more absorption of blue and red. Why? Um, photosynthesis. photosynthesis. Okay, so they're the wavelengths that get absorbed so the plant can generate its energy. Okay? So from these two curves, you can start to make an assessment of how healthy that plant is. Okay, because a healthy plant photosynthesizes a lot. Okay, so it's going to absorb here and here to photosynthesize. It reflects a lot in the near infrared because those cells are nice and turgid and it absorbs here for water. Yeah, so you can start to make quantitative measures based around that. And so, th I mean this is a theoretical curve. Alright, so there, there's always natural variation that you'll see um, that are differences. And so that's the way we start to analyze spectral signatures and different features on the ground, whether we're using a spectrometer or whether we take that measurement out of an image. Okay? So how much variation is there between different species of plants, basically? Um, 
some, some species are quite different to others and others are quite similar. So if you think about the, the multitude of plant species in general across the planet, you're going to see some that, that follow pretty much that same sort of curve and some that vary. And that's the basis of mapping and trying to pick out species from each other. So it's all about trying to figure out where they're actually different from each other to be able to pull them out. So, but you can, you can have the same plant which also has variability. Okay, so while you might have plant A and plant B and they could look relatively similar to each other but even within each of those there'll be differences. So there's always that level of natural variability. But you know, you know for yourself if you're looking at a plant, so you're only seeing the visible region of the spectrum, so you'll see that much, such a tiny area and you might see colour differences between those plants. So if your eyes can see the colour differences, then you can measure that as well. But being such a small region, this is the area that we really use to look at distinguishing those different features. All right, really what we see when we're, when we're looking at what's actually in a pixel and how that represents light, is we have incoming solar radiation to start with, okay? So you can have a look at the actual maths of it or just, fit, just work out the concept here. So as this comes down, it hits the ground. Some of that light that comes in gets scattered. Okay, so remember from last week we talked about scattering in the atmosphere. Um, and why is the sky blue was one of those scoops as well. So light gets scattered and will still come back down to the earth. Some will actually go back up to whatever sensor it is that you're using. So it might be a satellite sensor, an airborne sensor, or your field spectrometer, okay? So some gets back up there. And some of the light that hits the ground will also go back up to your sensor as well. Okay, so what we, what we see when we're measuring light either through a satellite image in a pixel or through a field spectrometer is a mix of all this stuff that gets back up, okay? So that's the total amount of light that we see. If we want to know just what's on the ground here, we need to somehow remove that atmospheric component, okay, which is some scattering. And we talk a bit more about that later in the semester and more so in the advanced class as well.